Congratulations to the Harvard Business School Class of 2020. We had hoped to celebrate this momentous occasion with you in person, on campus, and right in front of Baker Library. We join your families and friends and the HBS faculty in celebrating you today. Savor this accomplishment and the path that has led you here. Thank you as well to the student leadership and the entire planning committee for this wonderful invitation. We especially want to recognize Dean Noria for his commitment to building HBS's global footprint and his investment in Africa. We were thrilled to interact with over 30 HBS faculty during their immersion in Nigeria and Kenya last summer and applaud the terrific work of the HBS Africa Research Center. Harvard has always had a special place in our lives. Mezu and I met at the Harvard African Students Conference, organized by my dear sister Una in 1993, 27 years ago. We're both college students, I at the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania, and Mezu at Carnegie Mellon University. We're drawn to each other by a shared love for the African continent and our home country, Nigeria. A few years later, we're back on campus as students. I'm a proud member of the class of 1999, Section C, and Mezu, the class of 2003, Section J. While at HBS, we're active in a range of clubs, the Africa Business Club, the Christian Fellowship, ASU, and the Social Enterprise Club. And I initiated the annual Africa Business Conference. We understand that we're the first couple to speak on class day. The symbolism of this is not lost on us and would like to recognize all of the HBS couples, both within the current class and the alumni body who are fighting hard to build thriving relationships and dispel the myth that two strong personalities with dreams cannot have fulfilling relationships and careers. We have fond memories of the friendships we build at HBS and of the amazing faculty members, Professors Deborah Spar and Linda Hill, who serve as mentors for me till this day. In addition, we recognize Ken Powell of the ASU Alumni Association and Jeff Barnison of the Christian Fellowship, who have been pillars of support within the Harvard community for over 30 years. We recognize the important role that professors play, given that we both come from academic families. Mine who met at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and Indidi's who met at Cornell University in the 1960s. Both couples crossed racial divides and chose love. They soon moved to Nigeria to start a new life in the 1970s. Together, they built strong homes rooted in values of integrity, hard work, service, and patriotism. We observed firsthand their sacrifices to transform the university systems and their passion to invest in the lives of their students over the past 40 years. I'm also especially grateful to Dr. Gloria Hobbs, who met my parents as students and at 95 years old, still serves as my family's anchor today. For the parents, grandparents, and family members listening in, and for those who could not be here with us today, we celebrate you for nurturing, raising, and encouraging these incredible graduates. To the class of 2020, the world is facing unprecedented challenges. We have all been affected by the health, social, and economic impact of this pandemic the predictions of how long it will last and how life will never be the same post COVID-19. Uncertainty is and will be part of our foreseeable future. There will always be twists and turns in our lives. September 11th, which happened during the first few weeks of my first year at HBS, came as a shock to us all and upended the world at the time. Many of us did not anticipate or plan for the market crash seven years later in 2008 which led to huge job losses, rescinded job offers, and careers prematurely terminated. We cannot also plan for the loss of a loved one, a severe health issue, or the painful end of a, of a relationship. When faced with a crisis, the immediate tendency is to be overwhelmed with fear and to focus on self-preservation at all costs. However, crisis can also present new opportunities for growth and innovation. I would like to share a personal story. In 2007, four years after my own graduation from HBS, I had a life-changing experience I did not plan for. For context, I had just spent the previous two years as a chief financial officer and on the board of directors of a mobile telecoms company attempting a corporate turnaround. I had a lot of responsibility, was being stretched and growing professionally. My daughter, our second child, was also about to be born. So this was an exciting time for me. However, as I was leaving a dinner party on a quiet evening, 
I walked into a group stealing a car. I was shot in my knee and nearly died. It hit me then as I lay on the ground with a man standing over me with a gun that my title, degrees, and whatever was in my bank account did not matter. I could not take my accomplishments with me. Over the next nine months, I went through two major surgeries in Chicago and a difficult physical therapy. At one point, I thought I would lose my leg. I slipped into depression because I thought for sure that I would never be able to walk again. I literally tried to make it through each day. During this time, my faith helped to pull me through. In the words from Jeremiah 29, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you hope and a future. Families and friends also made a difference. Indeed, her siblings, my siblings, were remarkable and provided emotional support. A lot of friends also reached out during this time. I remember one friend in particular from high school, Uzo Aizimora, who was living in France at the time. He arranged to have a bottle of champagne delivered to me in Chicago with a note, which just had a few simple words. A little gift for, from me for you to only open when you start walking again. Received at a time I did not believe I ever would. Thankfully, I opened that bottle six months later. I was able to walk without a limp after one year. And four years after that, was able to go jogging without painkillers. And the past seven years, I've been part of an incredible close-knit running group in Nigeria. I've even dragged my son on a few of those runs over the years. As a family, we've learned how to find opportunity and hope in times of great change and uncertainty. My life was also deeply affected by a personal crisis. I was nine months pregnant at the time of Mezu's injury, and we also had a three-year-old son. Having to care for my husband and then our new baby when she eventually arrived was tough. Then on his road to full recovery, Mezu decided he needed a new professional experience in a different country, and we moved to Senegal, where he joined a startup private equity firm. It was quite unsettling to leave a very public role as the founder of a thriving nonprofit organization, Leap Africa, which had garnered tremendous goodwill, a few awards, and front page magazine covers, and essentially begin again in a new country where I did not speak the language and had no support network. I updated my resume and sent it out to at least 20 companies in Senegal. I waited for a few months and only got one call back. When the recruiter heard my voice and my limited French, he cut short the conversation. I was hurt and confused. 2008 was the height of the global food crisis, and this hit Senegal and many emerging economies, given their dependency on imported food. With each passing day, I gained greater appreciation about the distortions in the global food ecosystem and the untapped opportunities in Africa's agriculture sector. I decided to re-engage with my favorite subject in high school, agriculture. Through a new friend from church, I was connected to the unique opportunity to develop Oxfam's West Africa strategy. This work and subsequent other consulting projects with governments, international development organizations, and private companies birthed Sahel Consulting, which I currently run today. In 2009, Mezo and I decided to start our own agribusiness, Ace Foods, to provide nutritious food sourced locally, thereby displacing imports and transforming the lives of farmers. A few years later, through the visionary work of Dr. Akin Wumi Adeshina, then the Minister of Agriculture in Nigeria, and now the President of the African Development Bank, an innovative agriculture-focused private equity fund was born, and Sahel was selected as the fund manager, giving rise to Sahel Capital, which Mezu runs. We are both driven by the passion to transform the agriculture sector in Africa, to contribute to a flourishing, sustainable, and just food ecosystem, which leverages ag tech and digital innovations, driven by Africa's vibrant entrepreneurs to ensure that the continent nourishes itself and the world. We have only scratched the surface of the work in the food, agriculture, and nutrition landscape. 800 million people worldwide are food insecure. And this was the case before COVID-19. These numbers are expected to dramatically increase over the next few weeks. In fact, this pandemic has revealed that food security is a critical component of any health intervention required for human survival. Food is medicine. Yes, crises are real, and we can only expect more linked to climate change and future economic and health shocks. However, from our experiences since graduation in dealing with crisis, 
would like to share a few critical insights with you, the class of 2020 from the University of Life. First, build your tenacity and courage muscles. Regardless of how bleak the world looks at the moment or how radically you may have had to change or stall your plans, have confidence that there are lessons in this experience and that you have the tenacity and capacity to surmount all obstacles and emerge stronger and more aligned with your life's purpose. Lean on your faith, your support network, and dig deep for the strength to pull through. Second, find your life's purpose. Class of 2020, each of you has a unique purpose in life and is called by God to play a critical role in positively impacting your sphere of influence. This goes beyond what the world defines as success, beyond titles such as president, CEO, Forbes list rankings, board seats, to years after you've gone. What mark would you have left on this earth? Consider what brings you joy, what makes you angry, and what you're willing to do for free. Search within yourself and continue to search until you find that cause that you are uniquely qualified to address, driven by your passions, experiences, and skills. When you walk in purpose, work is pure joy. You are excited to wake up in the morning knowing that you're doing exactly what you were born to do. Now, given the health, economic, and social crisis that all our countries face, we need you to walk in your purpose and generate innovative solutions to climate change, poverty, gender inequity, the global burden of disease, the education crisis, malnutrition, and many other pressing issues, perhaps building companies or engaging in policy making as you do so, always considering the generational impact of the decisions you take today. Third, define your values and stick to them. Your success early in life can be destructive if you have not clearly defined your values rooted in integrity and humility. Character definitely has a currency. If people can count on you because they can trust you, they will invest in you, support you, and call on you to serve as a trusted advisor and board member. Remain humble as you change lives and freely share the credit with others. This not only builds trust, but enables a broader group of people to have ownership in your vision and eventually to lead the movement themselves, freeing you up to take on the next challenge. Fourth, build a dedicated support network. Invest in deepening your relationships with your family members and friends. Forgive more easily. Show gratitude lavishly. Be that friend that sends a few words to someone when they need it the most. Actively seek out mentors, individuals who can provide you with advice and support through the University of Life. Critics, people who can lovingly correct you and set you straight. And accountability and prayer partners to support you through this journey. I have been fortunate to have the same prayer and accountability partners from my time at HPS, and they have been an incredible source of encouragement and support. Fifth, live your life with open hands. When you open your hands, you position yourself to give and also receive. Be prepared to give your time, insights, knowledge, and resources to others. Giving opens your heart to the needs of the world and also takes your eyes off your own lack. Use your talents, time, and treasure to improve the lives of other people. And when you, you are in a position to make decisions, always think of the people who are not in the room and make sure to speak up with boldness. Mentor the younger generation, contribute to new knowledge and insights in your area of expertise, and give strategically. However, also be prepared to ask for help when you need it, especially if you choose to embark on the journey of building a marriage and parenthood. Your vulnerability makes you human and does not detract for, in any way from your self-worth. HBS class of 2020, no one will ever forget this year, not just because of the pandemic, but because of how humanity and members of the class of 2020 of the Harvard Business School were able to rise up to this challenge. An evil proverb states, Mbelede kaja ma dike, which translates, disasters help to sift out the resilience, resourceful, and the brave. Class of 2020, you are resilient, resourceful, and brave. Your tenacity, courage, purpose, values, relationships, and heart of service will set you apart. We need you to push boundaries, ask tough questions, innovate, disrupt, redesign, rebuild, and transform companies, communities, and countries. Congratulations once again, class of 2020. Your University of Life starts today, and we are rooting for you to soar and leave a legacy. God bless you all.